I'll start the video like this. It's the 10th of December, episode 7 of Spider Tank 3. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. Yes, we're going to start off a bit different. There's a metal pail here, which is beside a water tank at the front of our place. Now, when you take a look in here, you think there's not much going on in here, but if I take this out to the sun, well, we'll see a different story. Okay, so if I rotate this metal pail in the sun here, we're going to start to see some fairly distinctive web, and that there is red back spider web. If you look very carefully at that mess of web there, there's a little white bulbous critter with legs. It's right in the middle of the screen. That's a very immature female redback spider. I might be able to get her to move if I blow on the web. There she goes. She's gone back to her little nest area. Hmm, nasty, isn't it? She's very set up in this pail. Oh, she's coming back out again. She must like me. If I come in and try and give her a tickle, oh, she's very wary. She's run straight back to her home there. Oh, she's quite happy in this metal pail bucket. She's got the perfect red back spider home. You need fairly keen eyes to see this, and it sort of doesn't make sense to make your home within a, a metal pail because, well, where's the food going to come from? You're going to have to rely on something getting caught in that web there. I suppose the only consolation is that you could be safe from a skink or a bird from grabbing you from inside the metal pail. But I don't like the spider living here. I think this spider needs to be dusted. I know some people will say, oh, but you've got to save the red back. I think this is a great example of how these spiders adapt to the things we humans put around the house. Um, there's not many other spiders or critters that will set up into a metal pail and be very happy to live there. I can actually see her spider skin is actually down here. It's very hard to see. A lot of this stuff in here is tiny. She's only very young, but I've got the perfect solution to resolve this spider issue. I'm sorry to love you and leave you. That's a good night, sister. Dusted. Well, I can't see that small spider with eight legs moving about now. And if I do look very carefully there, and with my twee teeth, I can see her tiny, tiny little body there, and it's going to be a perfect meal for the ant colony nearby. I can see some ants going through there, and if I put the little tiny redback spider body there, it won't take long for them to find it, I'm sure. There we go. It only took seconds for the ants to find that red back spider. That is amazing. Don't you love the ants? I certainly do. Incredible critters. I better put the metal pail back where it was. I'd hate to upset the balance of nature. I'm out in the backyard now, and I know some people would have said, but you did no red back spider roundup videos. Well, we've had this incredibly different sort of kick off the summer, and I think the best way to show it is look at the grass. Look how lush the grass is. I've never seen it this lush. And in all the usual red back spider hangout areas, there has been absolutely no sign of their webs, which is quite astonishing. And what's even more astonishing is other spiders have been picking up these red back spider lures and let's take a look at who's living in here it is actually a spider that if you see this spider around you will not find a red back let's take a closer look at that one okay there's a gray widow or gray house spider or cement spider whatever you want to call it there's an egg sac there as well and if i drift the camera down it looks like there might be the male of that spider species there i'll need a spider expert to tell me but that is an incredible find now if you do remember I did put some of these spiderlings down in this zone and it does look like they have picked up and become adult spiders. That's a fantastic find. It sort of validates my ideas about these styles of spiders versus redback spiders. I've very much put this back very carefully because we want to promote these spiders in the backyard. They are our friends. A delayed upload like this is strange but sometimes can reveal other facts that happen in the future. Now, I did a redback spider roundup at the end of summer on March 5, and in this same area where I was so cautious about that grey house spider, well, sadly, I took it out with a flamethrower. I'm just going to blap the boy with a little bit of fire. Okay, dusted. 
Mm, some very bad news here. I've got some collateral damage. I've taken out a spider that is our friend of the garden. It's the one I spoke about, the cement spider. Oh, sorry about that, dearie. You're dusted. Oops, that was uh, not nice, but that sometimes is the collateral damage that happens when you're waging a war. Now, another curious fact about this video is it does show a plant in the garden that became a monster. You see it briefly earlier in this video, and I can show it here again. Remembering this is the 10th of December. Now, by March 5, that plant had completely and utterly inundated and taken over the complete backyard. It also completely destroyed every blade of grass that we saw so lusciously growing earlier in the video. That plant is a shark fin melon vine. It's called all sorts of other names in all sorts of other countries. And I've never ever seen anything grow so vigorously and take out the backyard like it did. Anyway, back to our usual boring program. It's just so incredibly different versus what was going on last year. And we had all those fires and it was smoky all the time. Everything was dry, hot and burnt out. And look at the backyard. I'll take a look at one more spider lure because I know you say, oh, but you've only taken a look at one. We're meant to be looking at the spider tank, not lures. Let's take a look at that spider lure there. Well, the first thing I'll note is I'm not seeing any distinctive sort of red back spider web. And there's none of that through the yard. Let's take a look who's living inside here. It could be anyone. <laughs> okay, cool. More good news. It certainly looks like another cement spider, grey widow, whatever, and there's actually another spider down there. If you can ID that one for me, it's just making its way into vision there. I'm trying to keep this thing in focus. There it is there. Okay, who is that one there? Hmm. Uh-oh, they're getting close together. Oh, no, they're not. I thought we were going to see something funky. Yeah, it's um, very exciting to see anything like this and not a red back. It's amazing to see how the dynamic of the spiders in the backyard has totally changed versus only a few years ago, which is what had me looking at red back spiders. I could bore you to death and I could take you to every pot in the backyard and I'm going to struggle to find any style of red back spider activity. And we certainly know the sort of areas they love to set up. It's an incredible turnaround for the backyard. Okay, well that's enough pondering of where the red back spiders are not getting about. So let's get into the area where the red back spiders love to hang out and that is of course Spider Tank 3. In a dark recluse corner of my garage resides Spider Tank 3. We're at a very, very interesting point in here now. Let me clear away the time-lapse camera and get some other lights on so we can see this properly. Okay, that's more like it. I've learned lots about redback spiders from this spider tank. In fact, I think for me, this has been one of the most interesting spider tanks, although it has been, well, frustrating to look at because everything in there is so tiny, but crikey, it is so much fun to watch what goes on. This is the log related to Spider Tank 3. I've got to keep track of all the dates. They are quite complex videos to pull together. Part 1, it all started back on the 15th of October when Egg Sack 6 hatched. Okay, so remember we're the 10th of December as I'm shooting this and we're Part 7. Part 2, uh, I'm yet to upload Part 3 at this point. I'm actually lagging way behind and when there's another stroke there that means it's been uploaded. And what I've called or part seven, I'm just calling it the pale spider, which is what we would have seen at the start of the video. I've also got here, and this is important dates as well, and this will bring back some memories. Uh, this is a rewrite of all of Barbie the Redback Spider's monumental egg sack laying, which ends up becoming all the children inside Spider Tank 3. The dynamics of what's going on inside Spider Tank 3 has been very spiderific, and I'll come in and I'll point out a couple of things of what's going on in here, which are important to note. Okay, now that egg sac there, that was the last of Barbie's egg sacs. It only hatched the other day, egg sac 11. It's the one where I put the cap back on it because it was opened up a little bit immature, and I know people would have said, Oh, but Leo, those spidlings are going to die. Well, guess what? They didn't die. Those spidlings are actually all around here. The wider egg sac below that is the black house spider egg sac that was put in, well, I think a week and a bit back now. I'm losing track of dates. 
Very interesting how those spiders have been behaving inside the spider tank. The black house spider spidlings were introduced on the 24th of November. The spidlings ended up in clumps all around the spider tank. There's another clump there. In fact, they're starting to stick to these tweezers. And if I turn the tank around very carefully, you'll see another clump here. And they've all got a very distinctive black house spider web network around where the spidlings are hanging out. Now one trait to the black house spider, let's say, versus those redback spidlings is the black house spidlings like to keep together in clumps very much unlike the redback spidlings who are far more individualistic in the way they hang out. If you're wondering what all the little black dots are on the ground, well, that's dead spidlings and there's also a whole stack of dead spidlings caught up in web uh, going up that way there. In fact, there's dead spidlings everywhere now one thing i've witnessed in here over the last couple of days and it's been astonishing to witness is as soon as a black house spider moves away from its clumpy little group well it gets taken out by a red back spidling really fast i believe i've got a footage there is uh, a red back spidling eating a black house spidling there's another red back going to come in and tease and try and get a meal here just trying to keep this in focus. Everything's tiny on this, and that's why I really love the boroscope. Oh, what's going to happen here now? I'm watching this, and I don't want to keep my eyes off it. But what I've noticed is that the black house spiders have just basically become cannon fodder. Whoa, look at that. See that? That red back spidling has just shoved the other one away, and it's going to continue the feed. Black house spiders in here have just become food for the red backs, and... That flies against uh, what people were saying to me about black house spiders cleaning up red back spiders. And what I often see is a red back will drag its food somewhere quiet and continue feeding. Often they'll take the food upwards. They do have their little designated areas where they like to hang out, especially the larger red backs in here, and there are a couple of those. But I've learned a lot by watching the spiderlings and how they live in the spider tank has been quite miraculous. Let me try and point out the larger red back spiderlings in spider tank 3. There's one which is residing in this zone here. It picks off black house spiders one by one. It's very clever the way it operates. There she is there, hiding away. Oh yeah, okay. She's right in the middle of the screen. A bit tricky to keep her in focus. She's very skittish. I've been watching the way she operates. She'll pick off black house spiders one by one. In a sense, she waits for them to come her way. They do break out of their clumps, and when they do, they're goners. And she's one of the few of the large redbacks in Spider Tank 3, and she's very impressive to watch the way she's been operating. I can understand how she's got to that size. She's quite clever. So that redback has this whole zone to herself. There's no other redbacks there challenging that zone. Let's take a look at another large redback, and it's residing hanging about near the other leg there okay right in the middle of the screen is another much larger female redback spider i would dare say this has come from egg sac 6 era this spider dominates this part of the spider tank and really anything that comes near it will be challenged and this spider is way more capable than the smaller spiderlings that are trying to hang around near it i've got a feeling that uh it's this style of spider that's going to be the last one in the tank here. Now one thing I notice about the redbacks when they're this size, they are very skittish. And I'm just going to go and disturb the web near her and you'll see how fast she moves. Okay, look at that. She's going to challenge that, I think. So we're starting to see she's got some redback spider attitude. And that's what you need to survive in spider tank 3. She's got all the right attributes to be one of the last spiders in here. Yes, yeah, so it's quite a sizable spider and I think there's a third larger one and I thought it was hanging out around this leg here, but at the moment I'm just absolutely struggling to see where it's got to. I just cannot find that third larger spider. There are other spiders in here which are a little bit bigger, let's just say, or should I say a bit smaller than the two you just looked at. Let me get the boroscope out because I want to show you something going on inside that area there. And the boroscope will show it much clearer than this silly clunky camera. So what we've got going on there, it's a red back spidling 
guess what it's eating? A black house spider spiderling. And I have seen this over and over and over. The black house spiderlings have just become a great big feed for the red back spiderlings in Spider Tank 3. It's difficult to express how important this device has been in understanding Spider Tank 3. It's really let me see stuff that is often so difficult to video. I've just changed to looking at the spider that is uh, down there. It's one of the larger red backs. Let's take a look. Down on the screen here. What I like about this unit, it's the, the, the screen quality. Wow, there's something argy-bargy about to happen. There's spiders moving. But uh, just looking at that screen and getting a nice clear view of what's going on is really important in using the boroscope because you are dealing with a very, very fine field of focus area. It is a little bit tricky to use. It took me a couple of days to understand the do's and don'ts of using this style of camera. Just to show you how sensitive it is to movement is I've only just got to tap the table and look at that it goes right through into the spider tank and the boroscope so you know you've got to have everything really stationary locked down. It also jiggles around like a party in the back of the bus. There is a shorter version of that style of boroscope, which is made for ballistic things that have long schnozzles, and there are a shorter version of those ballistic things without saying certain words. If I do twist the end up here, watch what happens. I'll get a slightly different frame. We might see some more spiders, but you'll also see how affected it is by iggling and jiggling. If I do that... Okay, we now see... If I bend it like that a bit, there we go. Two redback spiders, maybe the other one's a male. Or maybe you can tell me, it's a bit hard to tell. What I have noticed is the males will tend to hang out near the females. The males have actually got a slightly different shape to the back of their body, and I'm just going to jiggle the web and see if I can get things to move. It might be in a good way, it might be in a nasty way. Come on. Boys and girls, or girls and girls, or boys... Well, I know the big ones are female. Do something for me, please. Don't be so boring. Yeah, that um, that big female, that's her zone, so she's not going to want to surrender that. Come on. Jeez, uh, she's actually being quite stubborn on me. Come on. There we are, and now I'm touching her. Come on, little one. Give her a back scratch. Hmm. Okay. Oh, she's gone. So there you go, a nice update in a different way because sometimes people like to see the spider tank in this conventional mode using this sort of camera. And we'll progress on further now and we'll just take a look at uh, whatever's happening in the next couple of weeks in this episode. And that's how I take the scoop camera out, yeah. I better show this bit or else you'll be saying, Oh, but we never saw the spider tank. Let's go back on. The spiderlings are going to escape. Well, here you go. Spider Tank 3's lid is back on. Okay, into the time-lapse footage, and it starts off pretty crazy, and I've slowed this up so we can take a look. Happened pretty frantically as I set up the camera. It looks like a bundle of two spiders, maybe a black house spider and a red back spider, bundled together as a double meal, and there's a spider on it, but the spider will be challenged, and you'll see the spiders that have got the meal will sometimes defend the zone or defend their meal. And at this point of the spider tank, we've got some more established spiders in there from the first egg sacs that were put into the spider tank, and they are starting to really rule the roost. There's a real sense of the desperation kicking in as the food supply in the spider tank starts to diminish week after week. We're at a point in the spider tank that if you are going to challenge one of the larger spiders in this tank, prepare to die. Often when the redbacks are challenging each other for the meal, I lose sight of who's actually had the meal first and then who's had the meal second. All I know is this is just such an amazing meal. You can have black house spider for entree and redback spider for the main. As for dessert, well there's only two options. Grab whichever one you prefer. I'll put a red circle where the feeding was going on that we just saw. I've pulled focus back a bit and we can see one of the larger female redback spiders in the tank in her zone. Now I'll speak about these zones a lot from here on. The spiders, as they get a bit older, start to be quite picky where they're hanging about. 
And really, it's very reminiscent of what I was seeing going on in Spider Tank 1, and especially Spider Tank 2, which had adult female redback spiders. Okay, here's some cute little redback spiderlings, and they're down in that lower section, so they're a little bit more mature. The younger ones would be up a bit further up, and there's all different ages of redback spiderlings in here as different egg sacs hatched. I'm going to show you an example of the spiders when they challenge each other sometimes. What do you do? Do you fight or do you flee? Well, watch this one very carefully. Here's a great example of a spider fleeing and fleeing for its life. And then I can show you an example of, again, the beautiful little spiderlings looking oh so cute and glorious. And if you don't flee and you have a menacing spider in your realm, well, tragedy strikes. But a spider gets to go to the next level. You level up in Spider Tank 3 by obviously taking out the other spiders around you. There's no other way of leveling up. And when we're watching this, we're watching the dynamic of the other spiders around the action, because you will have the opportunistic spiders, who I think are very clever, because they're not taking that risk of coming in and doing a very dangerous act against something else that's as deadly as you. Moving along, I think there's a little male and female. Difficult to tell the males when they're young, but they start to get a certain look to them. And in Spider Tank 3, there's always something to eat if you're keen and Looking for food, the only trouble is on the smorgasbord here, there's only two options. And I can see a spot here where one of the larger, what looks like female redbacks, is operating in a zone at the moment. Yes, it's the zoned spiders which are the most troublesome in Spider Tank 3. Okay, moving along, looking at the top ring and underneath the top ring in Spider Tank 3. I spoke about this at the start of the video. There's a larger redback there. There's also a clump of the Black House Spider Spidlings. They like to stick together and safety in numbers seems to be their game. Sometimes they'll venture away from the area and that can often be fatal, but the red back here had the best of both worlds. It could pick off a Black House Spider Spidling if it wanted to, but it was the silly roaming red back Spidlings who seemed to be the ones this spider enjoyed to pick off in a far easier mode versus the Black House Spider Spidlings. So in Spider Tank 3, at this stage, there's only a few of the larger, more established redbacks doing their thing. They've got their little zones and well-established web in that area. And I do wonder, how did these few spiders progress to be the largest spiders in the tank? Is it because they're the most efficient killers in the tank? Or is there luck involved? Now, the way I like to see it, maybe you'll see it a different way, is there's a combination of both things going on. If you could say a spider is smart, maybe at this point what you need to do is set up an area in Spider Tank 3 that's your zone. Be prepared to take on things that you think you can kill, but also be stealthy. Don't be obvious. I think being stealthy in Spider Tank 3 is a good attribute to have to survive. Hiding out and making your area under the top ring is, I think, an excellent move in Spider Tank 3. This spider just sits here waiting for dinner to come its way and it seems to revel in anything that passes by. But let's not look at the top ring for too long because we may miss the killing spree that's going on in the lower part of the tank. It looks like a larger redback here has got what I'm calling a clump. I think there's a clump of multiple spiders bound in web. I've seen that a few times now at this point. And again, we see how a larger redback spiderling is a fairly dominant force in the spider tank at this point. Maybe another thing to look at right now is all the little black dots which are amassed on the bottom of the spider tank. And maybe something that I noticed going on with the more established spiders in Spider Tank 3 is they seem to want to gorge themselves. They seem to just go from meal to meal and act in a fairly ruthless and very self-serving way. Hmm, maybe that's the secret to surviving in this tank. At the moment, it does seem like the completely psychopathic spiders have it all their way. With these videos looking at Spider Tank 3, there's a lot of footage that you never see. Sometimes I've just got a camera there, and I know the spiderlings like light. They're attracted to light, so I can use that to my advantage. We also can see at this point where we have spiders setting up in zones, and we've taken a look at a few of those. We'll take a look at a few more soon. Well, I can see some problems developing on YouTube in relation to comments being laid against these videos and what people are asking me to do in the comments section. 
I'm not going to talk about a specific spider tank video, but it's only happened recently. And if I see people uh, being, I'll say, persuasive and bullying, in a sense, to either other people who are laying in comments or towards me, I don't like that very much at all. Unfortunately, I've been on this site for way, way too long. I've seen a lot of stuff go down. I've seen how people can implode uh, via the comment section. And if I see it continuing, those who are playing uh, quite nasty games, uh, they'll just be blocked. And I've done this before. I've had to do this because what I find is the people who start to lose it in the comment section can cause a lot of grief to people who enjoy reading the comments in relation to the video. And I've always thought on YouTube that the comments area is a complementary aspect to any video that's on the site. I know some people have comments turned off. I've never done that. There has been times when I've had trouble started on my channel and I thought I'd better close the comments off. But no, you just let it run and you'll have people come and defend you, which is very nice. But I'm starting to see with these videos, maybe because it attracts a certain style of person. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe someone who's into psychology can explain it for me, but I do know that sometimes in the comments area, you do have some people, they set up reactive comments, and people will come in and they're baited by them. And that's exactly what often the people who lay in quite reactive comments want to have happen. Some people say it's like troll activity. Oh, it, you could classify it as that. But it's also sometimes it can be related to the way someone perceives the world or the way they perceive where they are in the world versus other people. And maybe saying it in a quite simplistic way is sometimes some people don't realise the world does not revolve around them. No, we all share the world and we all share our different thoughts about the world. It's not all about you. It's sad I've had to bring this up and I've had to say it because I needed to stop. And I do remember when the first few episodes of Spider Tank 3 went up onto YouTube, there were some fairly toxic people who seemed to be quickly attached to the videos, and I've had to deal with them back then without giving any warning. And this time I'm giving a warning, so hopefully the people who are playing the games and the mind games uh, can desist, and I don't have to come in and be as brutal as I was with the people in those earlier episodes. I'm glad that I left a gap let the spider tank get to the very end because I know what happens at the end and it lets me produce a different video now as I go towards the end of spider tank 3. It also lets me look more carefully at the dynamic that's going on and what certain spiders are doing because this does directly relate to what happens near the end. And maybe the saddest aspect to these videos is, and I'm being completely honest here, it is a complete waste of time producing this content for YouTube these days. Maybe back in the day when YouTube was a different animal, it would have flown really well and would have been very successful. But sadly, the way YouTube is wired these days, I'm completely wasting my time. These videos take a long time to shoot. They take up a lot of time there, and they also take a lot of time to piece together. And anyone who's made videos or anything that's using a lot of footage may understand that, but hey, just watch the videos, enjoy them, and maybe just don't even have that thought in your head. Let's continue further on with this episode of Spider Tank 3. Sorry about that verbal. I have to set some sort of framework up, and I dare say those who cause damage in the comments area would never get to the part of the video where I spoke about them. That's the nature of those sorts of people so often. What we're looking at here is a larger, obviously, redback spider. Uh, I think it's female. And I always speak about that cloud of very, very fine web that the spider link set up. And it's always across the whole tank at a certain level. And you'll see sometimes spiders setting up little drop-down lines and being like little miniature versions of the adult spiders. And as we see, the spiders are getting larger and larger as time goes forward in the tank. The next thing we'll take a look at is it could be it could be a male redback spider and it's got a feed. Now, by the next episode, there's some really, really clear indications of males in the tank. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a male. Maybe it's not. Or maybe the spider experts are best to ID that one, but it's very interesting to look at. Then we take a look up near the ring again, and you often see a spider will get a meal and then... It will leave the meal and another spider comes in and gets what I call a free meal. 
And really at this point in the spider tank, no matter where I'm looking, I can find areas where there's spiders feeding on another spider. It's quite prolific, that activity in this cycle of the spider tank. There's actually a lot that we don't see because I tend to focus in on where I think the action's going to happen. And if I go too wide, and you might see that up the end of the video, you'll start to understand we're really dealing with what are very, very tiny spiders in the whole scheme of things. Really, everything that's going on in the tank is on the minuscule level. Up at the top ring again, there's a red back spider there, and what's next to it is its spider skin. The spiders shed their skins to grow, and when they do this, it's quite a vulnerable time for the spider. This gets looked at very carefully in an upcoming episode of the spider tank. So yeah, it's all fun and games in Spider Tank 3. Always expect the unexpected. And along the way, I tell you what, I have learnt a lot about these spiders when they're in their spiderling form. It's something that would be near impossible to see out in nature because it's all so teeny weeny and tiny. And to get your head around that, I set the time lapse camera up on a much wider angle so we can see the bulk of the tank. And it looks like just these little dots, which really don't mean much at all, but there seems to be frantic movement at times. The spider tank's unusual because, well, a couple of reasons why. Number one, it's always got a light on it, although I forced the light when I put the video together. The light's actually not that bright. Okay, it's forced in the edit to make it look brighter. And people say, oh, but that's cruel, and these spiders deserve their darkness, and oh, it'll just start a tirade of people talking about light and spiders but I can't see anything in the dark so yes these spiders live a very unnatural life in a sense because it's always light and it's strange and I've spoken about this often in the spider tanks is there's times when it's almost like everything comes to a grinding halt it's almost like the spiders are asleep and then it will wind up into manic mode where they're all triggered and almost like all setting each other off now the other peculiar part is because this is now in summertime there's very hot days going on and also the nights are cooler I notice the bottom of the tank the flexible piece that's got all the squares on it would expand during the day because of the heat and contract at night so this was setting up a very strange and slow oscillating movement of things within the tank there's always water in the tank and that's the little round bowl in the corner and what I was really surprised at was how much water was being used in the spider tank. I dare say it's just evaporating, but I did see on occasions spiders going down there to get a drink of water. And the time frames that episode 7 is bound by, and maybe I should have put this up at the start of the video if it wasn't clear up the front, it was between the 10th of December to the 18th of December 2020, and it's week 8, and extends all the way to week 9 and one glorious day. So yes, of course, episode 8 is next. And guess what happens in episode 8? Spiders eat spiders. I can't wait. <laughs>